<laughs> there you have it. Oh man, it is good to be back. It's good to be back. Uh, we've got some some fun stuff. Nice work on the uh, the intros there, John. But it is good to be back. It is weekly whiskey on Tuesday. I did not mess up the intro, which has been a long time coming. Yeah, it was good nice. to see everybody. Yeah, strong work. No, no after hours on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday, on a Thursday. But uh, anyways. If you're drinking something great, go ahead and let us know down in the comments. Um, John and I have some fun stuff tonight. It is our weekly Craft Corner episode. Before we uh, dive too deep into that, how are you, John? How are you doing? It's been a it's been a couple doing weeks, good. my friend. Yeah, man. Welcome back from vacation. I hope you had a hell of a time. Got yourself some sun. Yeah. Can you tell? I'm, I'm only a little bit less white than I was before. You are but only... four shades less white. Man, it's rough. It's rough being a very pasty guy. But... Um, such is life. Let's see. Um, yeah. So a let's news to kick this thing off. Yeah. Why don't we hit a little news? I'm, I'm kind of out of the loop, but uh, we've got I mean, you're the news guy. So hopefully you get something for us. Yeah. Uh, good evening, San Diego. But um, let's see. So two bullet barrels selected uh, two weeks ago, took a wilderness trail rye single barrel at barrel proof, which I'm super pumped about. Uh, two more whistle pig joining the flock, as well as a Heaven Hill um, Elijah Craig at almost, <laughs> yeah, four shades might be generous indeed from <laughs> Spirits of Air, you cheeky bastard. Um, and then an Elijah Craig, and I'm excited. We have Diamond in the Rift number three rolling up soon, as well as some fun stuff that uh, Barrel that we selected uh, with you, John, and crew is coming up as well. So stay tuned for that. And I think that uh, there are some barrel news for the night. Good deal. So uh, tonight we are going to be uh, joined shortly here by uh, our good buddy Blake. You may know him as the Bourboner. You may know him from Sealbox. You may know him as the Wa Queen Phoenix <laughs> of the Bourbon Community Roundtable. However, it is that you know him, I think we'll have a good time here. I'm actually sipping. Uh, I'm going to be sipping into one of the single barrels that he sent us here in a little bit, and uh, I think that should be pretty fun. Decided to go ahead and bust out the old. Uh, blacked out glenn can for the evening oh, man. as well been a while since i took this thing back out so i wanted to get this out get a little spotlight on it that's cool when did you when did you pick that guy up i know we talked back about when it we uh we had that episode with marianne eves yeah and she was talking about the eves blind stuff and as soon as i saw one of those i was like ah oh, geez that does seem like kind of a cool idea maybe i should order one right now yep oh yeah spirit surveyor he knows Blake is the guy who's taking most of his booze money. <laughs> Blake is very good at that. He will help you out with that in any way possible. Um, the easiest way is for you to go to Sealbox and buy a bunch of booze. Let's see here. Oh, Blake did join in, but uh, I saw him. Looks like he uh, punched his camera six or seven times. Oh, no. Moved, moved his laptop all around and then disconnected. So I'm guessing curve. that means that he uh, was like, oh, geez, maybe I should go get the power cord for my laptop and then also get the Ethernet cable and plug this thing in. Uh, so let's just hope that uh, it's not technical difficulty so much as a technical epiphany. Technical epiphany? Oh, man, I'm going to use that at my day job. Oh, you should. Technical you should. I, I've been using epiphany. that one. Oh, that has ring to it. I love it. Let's uh, let's talk about what you got going on right there, which is also a way that Blake has been doing a kind job of helping you uh, lighten your wallet. Yeah, no kidding. I'm uh, being cryptic here. So I know it's weekly whiskey, but I just got back from the south where it was warm in the tropics. And when I'm in the warm weather, I really like light brandy. And this is a Kelvin Oats um, from Domain Territory, which is kind of cool. Speak of the devil. Let me just pull Blake on in here real quick. Oh, could it be? Oh, hello. What's up? Welcome. Hello. Aboard, Welcome. Sorry, I had to restart my computer because for some reason, after uh, a little while, my headphones decide not to connect. So, Perfect. sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, your computer restarts much faster than mine, so kudos. <laughs> well, you know, those uh, 1998 laptops, they, uh, <laughs> they, they they don't have a whole lot that they can carry, so they just <laughs> they restart right away. Uh, I love it. Blake, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, y'all as well. I, I, I saw a little bit of uh now I always say Calvados, but uh I'm assuming I'm pronouncing it wrong just by the way that Jay pronounced it. But um was that the uh, Calvados, yeah, right on. Okay. Yeah. Right okay. on. Okay. I'm sadly what would you think? It, it's pretty good, right? Like I'm on bottle I, two, so that, that's are you right. like I, I had the same thing. It's it's like an addictive bottle, like 
Yeah, I don't know if it's just because it's a, such a different pace of like the bur bourbons rise and heavy you know, flavor profiles and just it's like drinking a nice warm apple pie almost. It's really good. Yeah, the thing that I like most about like Calvados is like a lot of people come over to Brandy from Bourbon and look for those like uh, those Armagnacs that are like big and pungent and woody and mm -hmm. very bourbony and not uh, like mm -hmm. this is just everything apple all day. Yeah. Before. Uh, yeah. which is it's fun like you know it's, it's very approachable it has a lot of great flavor but it's it's like, like very distinctly not bourbon uh um, yeah yeah and it's really hard to find 16 year basically undiluted calvados like everybody dilutes calvados down to 40 percent all day long mm -hmm. so finding some at 55 percent is almost unreal yeah yeah that's kind of what i thought whenever um we we're introduced to the cask and i'm like this sounds cool. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, this sounds just crazy enough that it might work. Let's do it. Yeah. 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 yeah, my favorite scene from Master of Disguise. That's uh that's just so crazy. crazy. It just might work. Yeah. Oh, man. Man. Fun stuff. But you are looking glowing. I feel like John didn't give you enough credit for the uh, tan in the uh in the I intro part. Shoes. I mean <laughs> I, I was yeah. already called out for being too generous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard because yeah i i, I spent uh, i mean we were there for i think like nine days and i spent every single day like i did not not go to the pool once like every single day even the day we left i was at the pool and i was like yeah i got a lot of color and then i booted up my camera and i was like and nobody well, could tell still the same <laughs> nope still extremely pale but i tried that's funny that's good enough for me man so uh blink i got one of these buttes back here and uh, try to do this without knocking anything over. So oh, far, I think I know what this uh, is. This is one that you sent me uh, a while back here. Is that healing? Could I get it the right way? Yes, yeah, the healing station. Oh, barrel. beauty. This yeah, is, uh, that, the that's a here. really good one. Um, I, I like those barrels a lot. Um, I, I tried to go pick another one, but yeah, it's it's essentially mgp that they contract distilled and then aged everything in memphis and yeah that was a really tasty barrel yeah i think you did a pretty good job with it i'm gonna dive more into it here in a minute i'm just uh finishing up some of this penalty but the uh the, that's the i think it's the batch five of their barrel strength yeah. okay yeah, the, uh, batch six think, just came I out watched you do the selection of the the healing or hulling or I, I don't remember actually yeah we did it with um oh shoot i'm blanking on their master what's her name um alex alex yeah right? alex um it's, it's memphis distiller on instagram that's bad that uh, alex castle <laughs> yeah, alex castle. oh yeah castle okay. her, her last name and like super knowledgeable it, it was it's fun to get in taste a barrel with somebody who like they can give you the intricacies of like in the science behind it and the engineering behind it. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, she really was uh, yeah. she squared right away on all that stuff. It was pretty good to watch. Mm -hmm. I remember watching you go through those. I was like, oh, geez, those sound pretty cool. And then uh, you threw a bottle of it over here, and I was like, oh, geez, I should I try that out for Craft Corner? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm um, glad you did. It's good. Yeah, I, I grabbed a couple things myself, kind of, you know, a few things I'm um pretty big on in the craft world right now one i think y'all may have just done one of these if youtube research uh serves me correctly which is starlight um did y'all just pick one of these yeah this morning i saw you post about it but yeah we picked um, one uh, a couple weeks ago and looking forward okay. to uh, potentially doing some more yeah, yeah so I'm, that shit I'm crazy stuff really <laughs> like uh, honestly it was so i went up there and uh, we picked two barrels, um, two barrels that we got, well, one and a half that we got right away and then had one being aged and like, it was one of the most fun tastings. Cause you know, you, you, sometimes you do these barrel picks now and they're like, Oh, well, we'll roll out three barrels for you and pick one of them. Or <laughs> we let's, let's taste two barrels and pick the one you like best. Um, and this it was like, all right, well, what do y'all want to taste? Here's all the barrels we have available <laughs> in the single barrel club. Um, then we got all this crazy stuff over here that at one point, I, I think Christian or Blake or the two sons of, of the, um, well, they're, I guess it's multi-generation, but they're, they're the youngest. They're, they're our age. And they're like climbing up on in the warehouse and just all kinds of cool stuff. 
Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, we got their whole farm operation with like every different type of orchard and fruit and stuff going on there too. So I mean, the yeah. possibilities really get to be just about endless. It is. We've got um, some brandy barrel finished bourbon coming. I think it's apple brandy. I'm almost positive. Um, and then we did a, um, which I think it was on on the little screen grab for this, the the rolling fork rum we did, which is um, eight year four square rested oh, in yeah. uh, weeded. Well, I could say it here, I guess a, a weller barrel for six months. Yep. And um, then we sent that empty barrel to Starlight and Starlight's resting. I believe it's bourbon in there. Oh, um, fun. Yeah. So that'll probably go about six months. Um, and then we'll dump that in. Yeah. And they're just like all for it. Cause then we're talking about other cool bar barrels we have. He's like, Oh yeah, send them our way. We'll, we'll throw some whiskey in there. And we'll make age. something happen there. Yeah. Yeah. But Christian's no. a hoot. Um, yeah, we, the selection, I mean, in a good way, it took like a million years cause we just kept mm -hmm. going down different rabbit holes. I was amazed yeah. at how knowledgeable and passionate Christian. Did you is. do that in person or did you? We Do did a uh, we did a live stream of it because it was the first time I got to like talk to Christian and then yeah. yeah his brother Blake popped in for a brief time that was a uh, that was digitally in the uh, the streaming oh cool kind of yeah vague. world yeah which um they're funny it's like you, you know coming out of school I think I worked in a landscaping company and then like got a job at an accounting firm and had to go count cars on new year's day. And they're like, Oh yeah. Uh, you know, we work in a distillery. Um, I graduated from Cornell and then I interned in Napa and then France. I'm like, you know what? I hate y'all. I know. <laughs> I'm sure it's all hard work, but uh, I mean, you know, yeah, like, I was the same way. Like, like decade of, uh, accounting to just, you know, be able to sit bourbon, uh, for fun and <laughs> somewhat business. <laughs> uh yeah i mean i i left school yeah i became a color scientist for like a multinational printing company and was like i thought that was cool but then i talked to them and i was like that wasn't cool at all like no <laughs> it's a very diluted version of cool that i just You're didn't know much accepted. yeah grouped down cool <laughs> <laughs> that was the basil hayden of cool as well. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding uh, uh, i want to shut that out of my eyes that fits. That fits really nicely. Yep. Nailed it. Um, you know, this is craft corner, so I guess I should I should be much more aggressive with um those yeah, macro producers. Tacking. That's right. You gotta go <laughs> against those macro Teching. If they didn't make great products, I probably would, but uh <laughs> so um earlier today we were chatting a little bit with uh some of the audience in Discord. Oh yeah. And we were talking about uh, one of the uh folks mentioned a particular distillery slash brand and wanted to know when we would have them on. And it kind of spun us into a discussion on what do you for seal box kind of classify as craft? Like what puts somebody on your radar as a brand or distillery that you want to work with or select barrels for or something to that effect? Mm -hmm. Like what puts mm -hmm. them into your craft sites? Yeah. Or sorry, Jay, were you going to say something too? Oh, I'm just over here popping bottles. Oh, time. okay. Oh, that was the <laughs> don't, don't mind him. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I'm, this is going to be the long winded answer, but basically, whenever I started Sealbox, mm -hmm. I took the, um, y you know, ADI, it's got to be under, it's like 100,000 proof gallons, no ownership, more than 20% of like an outside investor, and all these strict guidelines, and quickly realized like, that's pl pretty limiting for no reason. Um, so now I just take it more as like non-heritage distillers. So, um, you know, I'm not going to bring in uh, WB Saffel because it's a wild turkey Campari product, even though it's kind of niched off. Yeah, well, I, I wish <laughs> I could, but but that's not what I'm trying to highlight. So it's mainly, right. um, it's non-heritage distillers, producers that are focused on transparency and doing things a little bit different. Um, so that's kind of my definition, working definition of craft. Um, Cause even, you know, one that I love now, but if we look at it from the big picture, it's, it's probably outside of that, but is barrel. So I love yeah. barrel products, but you know, I don't, I don't know their finances, but 
I don't think they have some huge, you know, Diageo's not funding barrel, um, Constellation's not funding barrel. So they don't have that portion of it. Um, they have an owner who's always been out and transparent and as well as all their other brand people and they're doing unique things. I mean, their finishes and barrel selection process is just kind of expanding and really opening up great whiskey to people. So um, while they are in a lot of states, I think they still fall into that craft blender because of <clears throat> just how they focus on the blending process and are transparent about it. Um, so that was the long winded answer of what my definition of craft is and what pops up is it's, it's all over the place. You know, I'm, it may be something I see on Instagram. It may be in incoming email. It may be just um, talking with people in the industry. I mean, I love jumping on these kind of things because I'm never going to taste everything. So I like to hear what other people are drinking and enjoy. And, uh, and that's actually, uh, this wasn't the, um, the, uh, intended lead in, but one, uh, leapers fork, which is out of Tennessee. Yeah. That's how I got introduced to them. I don't even remember whose it was, but somebody posted a picture at the distillery and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Um, looks like they have a bottle and bond coming out. And then I was talking with somebody else and um, it actually um, was, um, oh shoot, what's his name? Um, Larry Eber Ebersold, who was the former MGP distiller. And he mentioned them. I'm like, all right, if he's recommending th their products, like I need to give them a try. Um, and so, yeah, that one just jumped out of me. A lot of times it's just recommendations from friends. Um, people in the industry that I trust their palates and all of that. So that's how you sort of uh, go about sourcing it and everything. Do you go a step further and get to a point where you don't want to work with a particular brand or distiller anymore because of they're no longer meeting your requirements of being craft? Yeah. So we haven't gotten there yet, but I imagine we'll have to at some point, you know, somebody's going to get guys like new riff, right? I mean, yeah. And I don't even know if they would be the one, but yeah, if Diageo comes in and buys new riff tomorrow, um, you know, I highly doubt that would happen, but right. good example. Yeah. I don't, I couldn't imagine still working um, with somebody who has a major buyout just I don't know. That's that's the tough part too, because it is good whiskey, but there's plenty of good whiskey out there. So it, it kind sure. of um, no longer fits fits the the mantra, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, ho hopefully I don't have to like make that call just any anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. Uh, not with new riff either. Jeez, there's stuff. So I know. Good. I, I'd pr I I'd know. cry. Well, I just act <laughs> like it never happened. I'm like, oh, there's stuff too good. <laughs> yeah, that's Until, all. Just yeah. Until There's I'm still... buying barrels that were actually owned um <laughs> right. the, the major com conglomerate, but this was all craft distilled. No. <laughs> That's right. We still I... got five years, you're fine. Yeah. 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 I feel like if Nerif is held out this long, they'll be they'll be just fine. Cause like I mean, mm -hmm. High West is taking constellation share, like Smooth Ambler yep. I know has some constellation share, although minor. Um mm -hmm. yeah, I've been surprised that, like no one has made like a big money move on new riff or even like uh like chattanooga and stuff because like both of those are just yeah. so good and like half of me is like oh, i'm surprised yeah. and the other half of me is like thank god and like you know well, yeah. new riff has sort of put their foot down on that like since they won and said like but we're not looking to get bought like this is not our thing we we're doing exactly what we want we don't want to change we don't want to sell so i mean That's not that point. that offer couldn't come through and, and change their mind but a, a great one that I've kind of, and this will just be like a transparent uh, thing, but like I, I've really been interested in is Bell Mead um, oh, because yeah. then they released their own under the Nelson Greenbrier label. It's their own distillate. Really cool story. Um, actually, I had a chance to meet the owner not too long ago, and they're one that I'd, I'd really like to bring in, but you know, they have a, a constellation ownership and, um, but Smooth Ambler, I mean, I've done picks with Smooth Ambler before, and I really like their stuff. So I, I don't know. And, and to me, I don't think, I don't know. It It's a tough one to kind of, you know, walk that line of what is craft, um, especially yeah. in today's market, because I'm sure there's a thousand other people that aren't making as good of a product, but they're independently owned and everything else. And so... You know, it's like, 
do you want to just have all these brands that you don't think are as good as the smooth ambler and bell meads of the world? Um, or do you want to have good products that are kind of outside of Kentucky and still don't have a major platform like a, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that leads us to like the, uh, the stickiest situation of all, because we argue in the distillery in question was, is Bowman a craft distillery? You know, it's distilled once at Buffalo Trace, but technically is owned under the Sazerac. It's redistilled at Bowman, aged there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go back and forth and back and forth and then back and forth again. I usually sit on the sideline and just take in the show <laughs> every time Bowman <laughs> comes up in our chats, because it's just like. It's so hard. Yes like, and like no at the like, same time. Yeah. I mean, I would at least say that we don't carry Bowman just because of the direct connection to Sazerac. Yeah. But I mean, I, anybody who's done that distillery tour would be like, no, it's, it's craft. It's, you know, it's cool, small production. They're aging it in Virginia. Um, but yeah, that that's a tough one. It's, it's funny too, because so someone asked me, um, and this someone is definitely Joel in the chat. So Joel, I see you. Um, uh, uh, he asked me, I think it was like six months ago. <laughs> it definitely was. Oh yeah. Fuck it. It was Joel. Um, he was like, is it craft? And I was like, no. And then he pulled up a review. I wrote like four years ago. That was like in this craft distillery Bowman. And I was like, oh, <laughs> pick, pick an argument with a lawyer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. They're tough. I, I lean no at this. Point. I mean, they're huge. It's, it's, I don't know if you're sourcing distilled from Buffalo. I, I think. Like, that's they big. could probably get by claiming to be a craft brand. But I think that you're really splitting hairs at that point because are they really making that product from start to finish? It's kind of like, is, is, uh, is Blue Moon craft beer? Right. Is craft, like, does it come down Maybe to the actual is, word? Right. Like, is it a verb at this point? Like, yeah. is craft what you're doing? Are you crafting this product? Is it a noun? Is it just like the way that you're going to be describing your operation? Like we're a small brand, like, yeah. you know, but by the actual amount of gallons coming through or is it by the amount of employees? And there's a lot of different ways to slice that pie. I don't really know which one is the right way, but I feel like if Bowman really wanted to try to sell it as being a craft brand, I would allow it, but it would be grudgingly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure like Woodford says they're a craft distillery. Shoot, Buffalo Trace themselves probably says they're a craft distillery because right. they're so hands on or, it, you know, whatever it is. Right. They, they all like the words. And I mean, Maker's Mark got sued for using the words handcraft. Um, oh, yeah. And and they won because, you know, they I guess it's a labor intensive process. You got to roll the barrels. You got to move the grain. You got to. Um, Hand yeah, show us bottle. where we didn't. Yeah, hand hand, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, so that's that's kind of the hard part is where do you draw the line? And um, I, and I think you have to draw the line somewhere. Um, but it, it gets murkier once you dig deeper into some of these distilleries. Um, I mean, like a like a I guess I can say like a Joseph Magnus. Um, do people know like who owns them and everything? Is that public knowledge? It it definitely is. We actually have a fun yeah. story on that coming up uh, this week on Whiskey Raiders. But yeah, they're uh, okay. Or like the the knowledge is out there and it's public info. But I, I yeah. the number of people I ask like, hey, do you know who owns Magnus? And they're like, no, no, I don't. I'm no. like, oh, like I don't think <laughs> you might be interested to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, did I, I think I just teased a great story for you now? Like. Yes. We'll leave it. <laughs> that wasn't that planned, by the way, but like <laughs> that's a great one where I think I would consider them craft of how they were blending and everything. But then when you look at who's behind the money behind it, it's like, oh, like that loses a little bit of luster, but they make a good product. And yeah, um, I mean, yeah. Murray Hill Club, Cigar Blend. I mean, even their standard triple barrel stuff is, is mm -hmm. I mean, it's a little pricey, but. That's the hard part too. Is that, um, I'll I'll tease into it too. We do uh, either great person bad whiskey or like bad whiskey great person. Um, and like <laughs> Jamie Fox bought brown sugar bourbon a couple of weeks ago, so that yeah. was our like like our great person who bought like a terrible whiskey brand. Yeah. Um, and uh, Magnus maybe swings the other way, but I mean, all their products are are awesome. I mean, yeah. well, Nancy Fraley, who um, she does the blending over there, she's 
incredible. And yeah. thankfully she's at a bunch of different places because um, I, I love seeing, you know, whenever I'm researching a new distillery and I see her name pop up, I'm like, Oh, good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you we know, it's send me samples, one. but yeah, I, we're good. We'll go ahead and get the PO in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, I forget, John, have you had still Austin yet? Mm. Yep. Okay, we, I, I think it was you. I was talking, like, Still Austin, it's two and a half years old, blended by Nancy Fraley, is just bonkers good. Like, it has mm -hmm. no excuse to be as good as it is. And, like, whatever blending, I mean, they're aging great barrels, but she's blending it. Like, it's probably the best whiskey I've ever had out of Texas. Like, no hands down. So, yep. I, I actually had a call with them last week. We're going to bring some of their stuff in. Um, right. And, and, did you know that so he was telling me and I, I don't know anybody else who does this so i'll throw it out to y'all and the everyone watching but they proof down the barrel as they go yeah which i've only yeah. heard of in like brandies i've never heard right. of anyone in the whiskey industry doing that maybe some rums do that too but um and you know he was just saying it just slows down that extraction and you pour pull more sugar as you go and so then when they're you know proofing it down at the end it's just been slowly proofed and that was how they're getting such a great blend because their stuff's fantastic yeah and it, it's cool to see yeah between nancy fairly blending it and them taking on that like big heritage brandy because that's something that like mm -hmm. cognac is very well known for is mm -hmm. you know sometimes you get like a 30 year old cask and you wonder how it can be cast strength at like 40.2 percent like oh you know right. be, and how they yeah. pulled so many freaking bottles out of it yeah yeah oh and it's 700 <laughs> bottles like what? Yeah. Uh, like, oh no we dilute as we go but you know that science um and it, it's always fun to kind of compare it to because i love pulling cognac that's been completely untouched but like that natural dilution has so much going for it especially in terms of stretching your yield and giving you so much flavor extraction and like extra oak integration, but mm. it, it's totally working for them. And they, like their stuff doesn't even have that crazy bitter kind of wood chippy yeah. over oakiness that I get in a lot of other Texas stuff. And I think it's working well for them. Like hats off to them for acclimating to, I think what is in it like an incredibly harsh climate for aging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very tough to age whiskey properly. And man, do they kill it? I mean, like you said, not even three years old and, I would put that stuff in a blind with many things of mm -hmm. triple the value or triple the price rather. And I think it would do very well almost every time too. It's just a really good product for the age. And, and for a distillery and that a lot I of folks have never even heard of. Yeah, I was going to say, and I think a lot of people haven't heard of them. And apparently they're sitting on a lot of barrels too. I guess they were just laying down quite a bit, which is great to hear if you're whiskey nerd and <laughs> it's like oh sure they have we are. a really good product and there's not like four barrels of this of age in the warehouse <laughs> what is this sorcery yeah yeah i always think it's really interesting when someone pops up and is like oh by the way we laid down 20,000 40,000 80,000 100,000 yeah. barrels oh and by the way they're all resting now and people are like what and like yeah <laughs> It's like that uh that scene in Star Wars. I think it was uh the second one, the the clone one, where they like realized that they had an old army waiting and no one knew about it. And they're like, oh, you know, here's a hundred thousand <laughs> troops. And I'm like, that's what I feel like when IJW or or you know, yeah, yeah. Bardstown Bourbon Company shows up, is like, what you want like two hundred thirty thousand barrels? Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. IJW especially, I feel like they just continue to move quietly, and I don't think does anybody have an idea of what they're. <laughs> Like, dude what, i know what the end game is or what the goal even is or just they're just they are like the uh, like... the bond villain of bourbon and i'm <laughs> super into it like they didn't exist and then they did and they have this huge campus that looks like super menacing and mm -hmm. a million like billion that. barrels it's like super the bond villain menacing. of bourbon i think that's it yeah bon <laughs> I, I feel like you could just give them their first release name <laughs> i will take royalties on that i will yeah. take it bottled and bond villains <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, that could be a sticker could <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm, you I'm might, taking you might have that. just done the heavy lifting there on that one. <laughs> oh, i'm trying to think of what we have that's coming up that's bottled and bond I might have yeah. to like find something just not many that. people do a, a private barrel bottled and bond, but I feel like it's it's gonna well, be worth all their to, stuff uh, is bottled and bond. Is no, because they don't proof it down. No, they're single barrels. Oh, right? that's right, not the single yeah. barrels. That's right. 
This will be like the first barrel I show up to someone. And I'm like, can we delete this? But we, we only want this at 100 proof, actually. <laughs> a little bit. I don't know if it tastes better or worse proof down, but we got a great sticker idea that we're gonna... we are shopping for this name, folks. And yeah, we already good. put a sticker together, so we're just gonna yeah. shoehorn the bottle into this. Okay. Here's the thing. <laughs> uh, Reddit would kill me. Yeah. 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 It would be the last selection we get for a while. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, like, it's super cool. IJW, um, I'm glad even Driftless Glen did it up here in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Like, we have a lot. Like, okay, so I said a lot, but I immediately take that back. We have a few distillers. Um, and I think that they, the biggest maybe has a 1,000 barrels hanging out, and then Driftless Glen popped up with 5,500 barrels, like, the next year. And everyone in Wisconsin went, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and Driftless is still putting up new warehouses. They're doing more barrels by the day. And it's interesting to see, you know, people's priorities as they're putting up barrels, mm -hmm. laying them down, contracting out, stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's the hard part is, um, it, you know, if it's, it's a cash game. So if you're putting so many barrels up and you don't have the sales pipeline, um, you could be, you know, shooting yourself in the foot, but if you know, it's a, it's a really tight rope that you need to walk, I think. So definitely. Uh, yeah. And you know, and it's an interesting industry. It's always fun to see everyone has, you know, some people have the same end game. Some people seem to have different end game. Barrel is always off kind of in left field doing crazy stuff, which is fun. <laughs> like oh, the craziest stuff. I love it. Yeah. It's fun. Barrel's like, we're just trying to source the most rare cask that we can to finish blends that you've never heard of in, and we're going to yeah. sell it and it's going to be fantastic. So and you're going to you're gonna not know that you like this and then want to buy three yeah. bottles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, cool. Well, uh, let's see, we're kind of running over the half of the hour here. I'm, I'm curious, you know, and this is totally open. I know we didn't prepare for this. Is there any fun craft shenanigans you are uh, looking forward to coming up on seal box, Blake? Yeah. So, um, man, what do we, we, we've got a lot coming up with barrel picks. Um, I know we got some, a couple things from barrel coming. Um, yeah, just cognac coming. We got, um, the rum projects are always really fun. And right now, oh, I actually have a really exciting one. Um, I guess I'll announce it here, uh, you know, cause why not? Um, but so there was a rum and I think y'all probably tried it at some point, Richland rum. They're out of Georgia. Oh yeah. Um, yep. and so th they're a single, um, operation. So they grow all their own sugar cane, they process it, they distill it, they age it all in, uh, Richland, Georgia, and now have a location in Brunswick, Georgia as well. But a couple of years ago, the, I think it was the first time I went to try a barrel um one of the or the master distiller was like oh yeah we do this project with um oh shoot who's the who makes hops executioner in athens um oh that's terrapin 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 yeah he's like we do this thing with terrapin they put their tiramisu who uh beer into it's like a tiramisu stout into yeah. Our ex rum casks, and then they age it for like a year, and they send it back to us, and we put rum back into it. And I was like, "Oh my gosh! Like this is the one of the craziest things I've ever tasted. Like Take I'll buy this barrel." Yeah, he's like, "Well, yeah. I don't know. We'll see." So couldn't talk him into it. Another year goes by. I go pick another barrel. Hey, your barrel's still over here. You want to try to get it? I'm like, "Okay, still fantastic." Like what I got to do is like, "Well, we we finally gave a label to s approval and all this, all that to say." I have the sample. The labels are ready. It's getting That's bottled. I think yesterday, maybe, um, nice. if, if not um, today. And so that one, you, you know, it, it's like always fun to have those projects that you've just been working on and like to finally be here. So that's really exciting. So I think it's going to end up being a seven year old rum, maybe a little bit over that because it was like a five year old rum. Um, and then um, two years in the the tiramisu who barrels from Terrapin. Um, so that's really exciting. That'll be in a few weeks. And yeah, I feel like we're, we're doing a ton of just different barrels and new releases. We've got the pin hook vertical club rolling. So um, yeah, 
a lot of fun. <laughs> I love sounds it. Like it man. That sounds cool. That's an exciting rum talk too. Man, uh, I drank a lot like of the lads here are going to need to go ahead and get on that bourbon or pro status to scoop those up. <laughs> Sneak into Cider the barrels. Girls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know Cider many. Girls. Ooh, so yeah, yeah. My life, right? um, he did the one with um, the the guys out of New York. Right? I got a small sample of that, and it was fantastic. But yeah, I don't know anybody else who's done that. Um, Tom Foolery may have. Yeah, Fuller like, definitely did. I feel like they did on maybe some rye. Um, and that'd be another good one to get in. The, the, fun one, thing. the fun kind of tough one with some of these is they're great, but people are like, it ends, you know, all these different finishes and stuff usually ends up being a more expensive barrel or bottle yeah. just because of the extra cost. And then it's like, do I really want to spend 80 bucks on an experiment that I, uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, that does get tough. There's definitely a tipping point on like, okay, I'm willing to shell out some bucks for a nice private selection of something that I, you know, I mm -hmm. trust Blake. He's had a bunch of crazy shit before, but it's always been okay. Or this is extra crazy and extra expensive. Do I really trust Blake this much? The answer is usually no, because no, he's crazy. The, the answer is you should not at all. <laughs> you, what well, you should do, though, is wait until we taste it here live, and then we can tell you, then... is Blake really off the rocker? <laughs> wait for his Wi-Fi to cut out. And we'll give you the real, the and, real deal. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, uh, I, I like to shoot for one out of every eight. One out of every eight <laughs> barrels is one where it's just like, and, and you know, it, some of them may take a lot longer to sell through and that's fine but you, you know the new riffs that sell out fast and the the rums that sell out fast that they, they kind of make Smoke up for wagon it. They're all, in one second yeah, that sells out that they make up for it and then you know i'm still sitting on like some 11 year old rye that was finished for i think it was like 18 months in a gin barrel from a treaty oak distilling i've had that one for like over a year but it's it's a fantastic whiskey but it just it's probably i think it's we're selling it for like 65 bucks and people are like do i want to spend 65 bucks on a test and i say you should yeah. but <laughs> i did not know that product existed but i'm googling it right now i've had that happen to be before too where that i didn't know about that 12 year uh rolling fork that you had whatever it was six seven eight oh, months yeah. ago yeah and you set the, some of that to try and I, I bought one the next day. I was like, this is so freaking good. How did I not already buy this? Like <laughs> it's just yeah. one of those things. There's so many things on Sealbox that I don't necessarily know what they all are. So I'm just kind of like, ah, man, how yeah. did you get treaty by that? I'm like, yeah, so, playing it up right now, but um, so, so it was, it was a 10 year old rye from, um, the old, um, Shinley distillery. So, um, Shinley? up, up in Canada, um, so it's a Canadian rye and then they finished it for 12 months in their Waterloo gin or what previously held a Waterloo gin barrel. And, um, yeah, so it was one I did with Aaron Goldfarb. We visited out there and they were bringing out some crazy barrels. And this one we're like, so what do we got to do to <laughs> <laughs> reserve this one? Because this is really good. Um, but yeah, that, that's always the fun stuff. And, um, you know, I probably, uh, I guess I'm a decent salesman, but I'm not a, like a great salesman because I probably don't make these things uh, or talk about them enough that um, it's like, oh, we released it. Everyone knows about it. And really people don't, but it's it's a good one. I love it. Yeah, well, man. I'm I'm definitely going to check that out because I mean, I'm on your site more often than I would care to admit. And I <laughs> forgot that that was there. So yeah, yeah don't and i really like gin too which is even sadder <laughs> yeah. well have you uh, had the treaty oak uh waterloo gin i have um, and i've got a couple of their single casks here that are like yeah darker and dark and like 75 77 percent abv just like mm. longer stuff i have the normal waterloo too but it's good stuff like i like it yeah yeah um, and i really like shunley rye so that's why I'm like over here kicking <laughs> myself. Like, yeah. like Canadian rye and the gin I like. Like, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But such as well, that. if we sell some of that this week, uh, D would be extremely happy with me because she's like, I mean, we've had it for a little while. What should we do? I'm like, people are going to want to drink this. Like, eventually, like this is a fantastic product. We are going to sit here and uh, I'm going to drink it. But that's uh, uh, a. 
that's good to know, especially since I was like, uh, you know, I, I did an order earlier this week. But anyways, uh, we're going a little long in the tooth. Um, if you were looking for uh, more from Blake or Sealbox, uh, Blake, where can we find you? Yeah, so um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, mainly Instagram for Sealbox. It's drinksealbox.com. And uh, up on the screen because Sealbox is S-E-E-L-B-A-C-H-S. And then um, I am at Bourboner as well. So, yeah, guys, thanks for having me. Always fun. Always good to come on and chat about craft whiskey and uh, all things experimental in the craft whiskey world. Yeah, well, it has been great to have you. Um, craft uh, Corner is one of my favorite uh, segments that we do every month. If you're looking for more from John, you can find him at the Bourbon Finder. Um, he just put up a great series of reviews. Uh, I'm told that some notable online establishment just quoted his seagrass review, which is kind of cool. Uh, Barrel Seagrass is awesome. Check it out. We had that on a previous episode. And as always, I'm Jay from Whiskey Raiders. You can find us at whiskeyraiders.com. We're the uh, Rotten Tomatoes of Whiskey, and I'm on Instagram as well. And I think that uh, that wraps it up for tonight. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on Thursday for After Hours. So uh, cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cheers. Woo. Cheers, everyone.